Awesome. Thank you, President of the Marketing Society. I would like to present you with a few words our next speaker for the day, which is Mr. Stephen Papilidis. Unfortunately, Mr. Caracas, which was, uh, was uh, scheduled to talk to, the, to, talk to us at the Paridatis. So, luckily, Mr. Papilidis is here to talk to us about the company. Mr. Stephen Papilidis is the Marketing and Communication Manager to Spain, one of the leaders in social media and, uh, and uh, word of mouth marketing and uh, one of the fastest growing content ma marketing agencies. The company has headquarters in Switzerland, is active in 10 countries has and has clients in various areas such as retailing, finance, technology, fast moving consumer products, entertainment, automotive and others. Mr. Bobilidis comes to explain having more than 10 years of experience in publications and technology. Explains presentations have been uh, among the top 1% of uh, presentations viewed in Slideshare. The company's presentation on social media return on investment has been awarded as the third most popular presentation, the business presentation for 2011. More than 280,000 viewers had seen the common presentations in 2015. So I would like to um, let us welcome Mr. Fabi Lidis to the big news Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for the very introduction, Lidis. Uh, can everybody, everybody hear me okay? Okay, that's good. First of all, thank you. Uh, you've done a great research on explaining I wouldn't have said it there myself. Uh, I will, though. You would even want to let me do so. But thanks for that. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to be here. Uh, first of all, I have to uh, apologize on behalf of Mr. Carados, who really wanted to be here. This presentation is uh, mostly his work. I've uh, just worked with him on uh, just a couple of pieces. So, fortunately, he came down with a bad case of flu. Uh, his apologies, and uh, hopefully, sometime in the future, he will be able to be with you next time. So, what we we'll discuss about uh, presenting you here today is something quite valuable for uh, your future ventures as uh, a new entrepreneur, or businessman, or however you want to call it. So, basically, we're going to talk about what's important in social web or social media, as so we usually call it, uh, in measuring how successful we are. Just give me this one slide to. Uh, Explain. First of all, um, we're active in nine countries. I guess that you make this is pretty good some information on your nine or get pretty good, but still, we're going to be hopefully in 10 countries soon. Uh, we have uh, a lot of clients we're proud of, mostly multinational corporations, but also some uh, local companies as well. Every plan is really important for us. We gain some good achievements, like a slideshow achievement that you mentioned. We don't want to get to busy on that one, but it's not of real interest to you, I guess. And uh, among the services is a wide range of concepts as content marketing, social media marketing, online reputation management, and the whole strategy and evaluation that comes behind that. So, enough with advertising expense, I guess. Let's start with a uh, story to avoid. Let's say that probably you pretty much heard that um, back in, let's say, five years ago, 2008, 2009, everybody found out about the social media. It was like, let them be light. Everybody was extremely happy with it. Uh, social media, everybody wanted to be on social media, everybody rushed there, okay, we've got to have a Facebook page, we've got to do this, we've got to do that. And uh, it's not that simple. First of all, let's clear the, the notion that social media and the social web is free. And it's actually not. It's kind of a situation where you get what you pay for. You pay nothing, most likely you'll get nothing in return. So, uh, probably this, you've seen this quote, so you've heard them before. I had to go on Facebook, my competitors on Facebook is scoring some, I don't know, 10,000 pounds. I should be there and I should pack my business with people who visit me on Facebook. Or uh, I really need to have some banners. I have to pay some banners so people can see me all the time and click on my banners and come to my website and get my e-store and uh, buy some stuff from me. Or the other thing that notion is that uh, we have to have a keyboard to be so little tablets of words that um, may or may not, not relate to my uh, company or my brand, but people 
tend to uh, search with it, so I have to have it on my website, so uh, people visiting and searching for such keywords will come to me. And uh, the short answer, those three is no, no, and no. Because, here are the facts. First of all, about Facebook, uh, you may or may not have uh, heard or be familiar with uh, Facebook being, of course, part of the New York Stock Exchange, which means it's accountable to its uh, investors. So the short version of it is they can make money. So uh, the three things for brands on uh, Facebook, not that widely available anymore. With recent changes, we have measured in other agencies along measured this for us that uh, about 4% of all the funds that the brand has on its Facebook page will actually see uh, from the cost that is made. What that means uh, in terms of perspective, uh, I would assume to roughly around 50 over here. So if I was a brand and uh, that was my Facebook post, it's was my Facebook post, you know what I'm saying? It would be, I don't know, Mr. Jokuri, which we discussed before, and uh, the young lady back there who seems a bit interesting. That would be about that. Nobody else would see that presentation for me on Facebook, right? So it's only 4% for brands. And we had the, the original, the initial trends for this saying that this 4% is actually going down. So don't be too surprised if, let's say, okay, five months may be a bit forward. But if a year from now, we won't be able to see branded business posts on our Facebook newsfeed or timeline uh, if they're not paid at all. Now coming to uh, banners, uh, web banners, okay, it's a great uh, web budget as everybody's doing digital banners nowadays, right? It's great. Uh, if you're thinking of having your own company and advertising only on digital uh, assets, digital banners on one hand, or applying for Harvard University for your next step in uh, your academic career, I would vote for Harvard. Harvard acceptance rate is 5.9, well, it was 5.9% in 2012. Uh, Click-through rate, that's what CDR stands for, is below 1%. Uh, actually, it's not in your favor to expect people to actually click on the banner and uh, visit the website uh, anymore because it's too cluttered. Uh, there was a comp score, which is a big uh, statistics found on the internet, they did the research last August, uh, and they turned out that the average user, which is probably you more than me, uh, is exposed to about 1,700 banners per month. Which means that from now to least, you're going to probably see 2,000 banners roughly on uh, your internet visits, which practically means you won't remember any of them anyway. But if it's supposedly an exposure of brands and names and logos and stuff like that, nobody actually remembers that. Going back to keywords now, the third uh, part of the discussion. Google's been changing the, the way that the game uh, in regards to the search. Actually, what they're trying to do is uh, make uh, their algorithm, which is called Hummingbird, the new one, uh, more sensitive towards what people are actually looking for and less about keywords. It's not what the keyword that I want to relate to if I'm I come from background in Hollywood and Microsoft for about eight years, so I used to uh, market keyboards all the time. But people don't look for keyboards, they might look for the cheapest keyboard or a mid range keyboard or the best ergonomic keyboard. But that's not a keyboard, that's a humanized question asked to Google in terms of search. So, what Google trying to do, and we're going to see in the next few months, is shifting the way it's calculating and putting the whole keywords into the all around, all around context that exists within a search query. Unfortunately, even today, we tend, I mean, agencies like us, hopefully not us, but other agencies out there, tend to sell Facebook, what we say, by a kid or by a pound or whatever you want to call it. Because it's just about numbers, it's like apples and oranges. It's like, get one Facebook page, get one Twitter account, we're going to do three branded posts today, and uh, we're going to have uh, one application, one contest per month. And, that's pretty much the key. Where's the strategy behind it? Well, where are the objectives? And uh, the truth is, there's no one single way to go on social media. It all depends on the business plan, the original business plan that your company is going to have, and uh, your original targets, your original objectives, and the strategy behind that. That's what's going to show you whether it matters on the social web. So, uh, I think I have confused you a bit, so probably you're thinking of it like this, right? You're going on, right? For an 
Why did the Franks and Seals actors not mind that? So, what's the point? How can I do it? The, the answer, the real answer is there's no definite way, or rather, there's a lot of ways to measure your success on the social web. There's a lot of metrics, there's a lot of uh, things to do, things to come for, uh, and it all comes down, as I said, to what actually your business plan, your business strategy uh, is all about. Social media is just a means, but the overall business strategy is what counts. However, since I know that this is the main plan for you, we'll try to keep it simple. We'll try to put some five little steps of what you should consider from starting your own venture, business venture, and thinking about promoting it on the social web. First one, we're starting easy. Let's follow the final. Yes, uh, uh, at least a uh, respectable amount of your from marketing orientation. So you know what actually the funnel is. You're trying to get people who know what you're trying to lead them down the funnel to make them active clients or customers or whatever you want to go. So uh, one of the most popular uh, final models is uh, this one. It's called Gaida. Uh, nothing to do with great. But this is the point. It's, uh, you start from awareness from people knowing your brand. And they even went down to interest, getting interested about you, and uh, then you bring them down to desire to have them to use your product or your service. And then they act. And we usually, because we talk about social media, we're adding a second A after that, which is advocacy, what I'll come to that in a minute. So, uh, how can we relate these things with the actual stuff that's happening on the social web? Uh, we try to keep it simple. So, in rough terms, the awareness is the equivalent of reach. How far your message that you put out on the social web goes. If this uh, concerns your friends or your fans of your business page, and uh, if uh, these people are kind enough to uh, interact with uh, your post, like liking it or sharing it or doing a retweet or something like that, uh, you're moving up to interactions. So uh, you show that people are actually interested. And this shows up not only to your fans, but also to your friends and fans. So it's a much wider area of people that you are about to reach with that. So interest comes down to interaction. People actually looking interested enough to interact with your brand and uh, your posts and what your activities on the social web. And uh, desire can roughly attribute, let's say that most of you are you living today, you're young people, uh, not like people. Uh, you actually plan on stuff. So let's Take for the sake of the argument that you're building a great mobile app that's going to rock the world and be the most amazing uh, app that's going to happen. First thing you want to do in terms of desire is make people, after being aware of it, you interact with it. Let's try it out. Let's download this. Uh, it might be a trial period or a, a limited functionality uh, version of it. So we can try it out. And the real action is uh, not just buying the product or downloading it or using it, it's to make it a habit for me to use it. Maybe it top of mind uh, when I want to go from point A to B, I'm going to use this relatively small like that because it's, it's the most amazing one that I have. Uh, so acting and then advocating, uh, that's perhaps the most intriguing but the most important part as well because happy customers tend to share experiences with each other and we'll come in a minute to what sharing means nowadays versus 10 years ago. Uh, so make them happy and uh, they'll share a good word for you, which is probably the best thing you can do. <coughs> what to measure here? There's a lot of things to measure just indicatively. I uh, want to show you uh, reach, which is one of the most important factors. The time frame might differ depending on what you want to actually measure, and how it's more. But 30 days is usually a good starting point to see how people, uh, how many people are reaching, how people are interacting with uh, what you're providing on social web. If we're talking about the leads of the app, how many downloads did you have and how many of them did actually turn the leads to customers from trial version to full version? And of course, how many people are searching about your brand and how many people are mentioning your brand in their comments? Good, bad, good, and well. Okay, up here you want to keep notes of this, you'll probably get a uh, presentation anyway. But... So we're moving on. That's the first step. Make sure that you're here to the value of the time while right now and just adapt to the social web. Second is follow your audience's path. And that's perhaps one of the most important elements. Does anybody of you have heard the term uh, Z mode, zero moment of truth? Anybody? Hands? Nobody? Cool. I have a great thing to say to you. <laughs> okay, let, let's get back to that. Let's go back to 2005. And uh, it was actually a proper example of PNG. But you all know the company is a fast-moving consumer goods company. 
Uh, they've actually coined um, mental marketing model for their uh, products, which was called First Market Food. And it's actually the three gray circles here. One, two, and three. That was the original model. It says this simple thing, that everybody, everything starts with a stimulus. Uh, you might be stimulated about a product or service to uh, most usually add, but it could be something that you'll see in friend's house, or uh, you might see a great car down the street or war. I've heard that one. So, people get stimulated about a product or a service. What used to happen back in 2005 is that they would go to the store. And uh, if I was too excited and found out about this great presentation that the ladies here were kind enough to let me, uh, I'm probably like, okay, I'm going to the store and I'm picking up um, the packaging and I'm seeing the, the reviews the, the text packs and stuff like that. So I'm getting off. That's my first experience. That's my first moment of truth with the actual product or the service. And then I buy it because I'm happy with it. I go home. And that's my second moment of truth, the real moment of truth, because I plug it in on the computer and I say, okay, this turns out great. And that's my real experience with the product. And uh, up to 10 years ago when this was done, um, my experience would probably seem that I would go to my wife and I say, hey, look, I bought this cool thing, and it's great for my presentation, she wouldn't even bother. That would be the end of it. 2012, fast forward, Google is coming out and says, okay, things have changed the data of that model. And uh, they're running. This thing over here, the big bubble, it's called the Zemo, the zero amount of truth. And uh, can you guess what exactly it is? You're doing it every day when you want to buy something. Everybody's doing it nowadays. You hear on the radio, uh, on traffic, about a new product, and you're stuck on traffic. What are the chances of you pulling out your smartphone and checking it out and do? Does that sound usual? Yes. Cool, because that's what zero amount of truth is all about. It's it's the moment where people are actually getting out of the tablet or the smartphone or the laptop or the PC and they're opening it up and they're checking for uh, what they have found so far and they want to get some more information from it. And uh, usually what they're going to get, 95% of the times, is not going to be an ad. It's going to be somebody else's experience. It's going to be a review on Amazon. I guess most of you know, might have done some shopping. It's going to be a review on a blog. It's going to be a review on a forum or something like that. So, in short, uh, the zero moment of truth for me would probably, or rather not likely, would be the second moment of truth that you had and you took the time of writing an online review, or at least your opinion about it, probably. This is great, this is a waste of money. So, that kind of closes the loop, and uh, zero moment of truth has become one of the most important things that you should incorporate uh, on future marketing plans or everything you do about to venture out of this. Uh, and of course, social web has a huge role in it because that's the main uh, hub of interaction between people, uh, exchange of opinions, politics, things like that. So how to measure that? Uh, first of all, it's the sentiment of people. There are great sentiment analysis tools out there, and uh, we'll get to those uh, a bit later down. Uh, we could be talking great about your plan, we could be talking not so great about your plan. So you should measure that out. You should also measure not only the actual number, but also the threat of it. If you have a 80% um, positive sentiment, sounds great, right? But if you go back a year and you see that you had a 96% positive sentiment, now you're down to 80, it doesn't look so great suddenly. It seems like going down, we have to rectify it before we hit our bottom and let them know about it. So uh, you should actually measure the sentiment trend as well. Uh, you should check how many reviews are uh, in Google. Ideally, all of them, but most of us don't usually go past the same Google page when they're searching for. If there are any reviews on the first page, uh, you should measure them. You should check how many there are and how positive they are. And of course, how many people are actually reviewing your products and sharing your experience, the more the better. And, uh, what are the most popular landing pages on uh, your site? You might just check the Google Analytics and see that your business site is 80% of traffic going into one product only. That, what does that show you? That probably this is the product that you should invest some more effort in budgeting because that's what people are actually looking for and that's what gets all the traffic. So always be aware of where the customer is going. Just don't let like, just think that, okay, I know my product and leave it at that. It's not going to work. Third, we are a, a constantly changing online environment. This means that we can micro-test everything. I, I used to be as a certain client for the international corporation, so the agency came up to me and they said, okay, we're going to target males 18 to 24. 
and uh, in background, I, I'm not sure that's going to work because seeing you in here, I mean, that's the major demographic, but I guess that there are different interests, different habits. Some of you might like classical music, some of you might like heavy metal, or some of you might play basketball, while some of you might enjoy cycling. You know, where, where's the common thing in that about the age bracket? And there's none. So uh, make sure that everything you put out there in terms of either an advertisement or a call to action, you can see that as a CDA. Uh, make sure that you test that, test how it works on a given audience. You might, for example, try to change the artwork of it, you might have a product on one person, and you might have a more humanized uh, picture, let's say, a beautiful lady or a you know, nice guy on the front. Or you might want to have the tagline on one and just the product name on the other one. You might want to have the call to action ranging from, would you please be kind enough to click here so that you can download? But don't use that to be it's software. <laughs> just an example. Or you can go with, Download now, and uh, it's like, whoa, it's, it might be big data for some people. So, play around. Just keep in mind that when you play around, don't do all things at once. Just change little things. Because if you have a totally different versions, you can't really know what went wrong or what went right. So, have the same version, change the little thing. Play with that. And uh, you'll see some very interesting things. First of all, how consumers will react to your uh, campaigns. Um, in the different calls of action, uh, will the download now work better? Okay, fine, you can use it for the way the others. Check, check these kind of things out all the time. It's really easy to take these tools and it's a real, more than real time world. So, uh, actually, you can have a, a first evaluation of an ad campaign in less than the first hour at some time. And you can adapt from there. Uh, if you're planning on doing an email campaign, you can uh, actually try to see how the, the text on the email compare and contrast with the text on your landing pages. See how you can actually leverage that to your benefit. And uh, of course, how the, the actual CDAs on your website are performing because you're putting some content or an, an ad on, uh, let's say, Facebook or Google or whatever. And this should lead them to your website. And uh, from there, you should do something. You, Perhaps you ask them to download the app or buy a product or to register online or something like that. So you have a call to action. You have to have a call to action that will be down the funnel that we discussed about in the first step. So make sure that these um, CDAs are tested so that they can perform the maximum um, way. Fourth, and uh, really, really important content. Content is a very, very important thing. As we said, Google is changing its algorithm uh, to uh, face how people are actually searching for things. Content, it's not now content. Usually, even uh, press releases we used to do in the past uh, were written uh, not so much with what you're going to read, but more about how uh, Google is going to translate all these keywords and bring it up higher and higher. This is not the case. We're talking to people, and this is going to evolve and change in the near future, so you can keep that in mind. Try to make your content as humanized as you can. I'll explain we have a rule uh, we've made up to make it simple for new colleagues to join us on board. It's really simple. It's called the 3F rule. First F is for them. You don't talk about your brand like it's all me, 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 okay? You're talking about the people. People are not searching for brands. They don't care if the Stanford brand is here but in TV. They're searching for perhaps an interesting and valuable presentation regarding social media. So that's actually what we should address. They need to find a solution, not advertise the brand. It's not about the communication it used to be. People are giving up, they saw you, that was it. <coughs> now, at any point in time, everybody can get out on social media and say, okay, but you, you're not doing a good job. Why are you advertising? And uh, he or she can be heard. Consumer voice now can make a difference. So uh, it's very important to address them and their needs, not so much advertising them as a guide to a longer implementation. So that's the first step for them. Second step is fantastic. Make sure that your content is actually fantastic, and we usually spell that with a twist. We spell that with a U, so it has the fun element as well. Because everybody needs to smile now, then, okay? If I get into Facebook, it's my friends, I don't want to get some more misery about it. I don't know what. So, it's very important to have great content and keep as much as possible the final in the The third F, and uh, the fact that we'll forgive me for that, it's freaking awesome. Freaking is not the word that we use, but it's freaking awesome with that. Because do a simple test. If you're creating content for one of uh, 
your businesses and uh, your regulates or your name for the artwork, step back a bit and say, would I, if I, this came out of my newsfeed, would I actually sell that with my friends? Would I think it would be right enough and blue enough and not? Would I do that? And if the answer is no, go back to square one and redesign it or rewrite it. Because if, if you're not willing to share it, nobody else will be will. So make sure that your comment is awesome. It's about people and it's about giving them a little smile because they interact right better with the way they perceive your brand. And of course, there's a slight change in Facebook and Google nowadays. Uh, you might know it, you might not, but uh, a year ago there used to be uh, Facebook plus all the time when you search on Google. Now that's not the case because Google, Facebook, there's a kind of work going on social media as uh, these corporations grow. So uh, you might create amazing content on Facebook, but uh, if you search for it on Google, you won't see it there anymore. So our advice on the side of is, is instead of just putting everything on one social network like Facebook or Twitter or whatever, try to keep it on a hub that you own. It might be a blog on your site, it might be the actual website, but make sure that you're keeping this uh, as your own content, not something that's been posted on Facebook and nobody will see it away from now. So that you can return back to that and capitalize it. Okay, what measure is how many links your brand owns on Google's first page? And oh, by owns means how much of your own links. Uh, it might be the home page, it might be your Facebook page. Facebook pages as addresses still appear on Google when you search for a brand. It might be Google Plus. I don't know how many of you know it, but it's uh, Google's child. It's a uh, Google social network, and uh, we expect to see much more of it in the near future. Our notion is that Google waits for something to you know, make a kickstart, um, maybe skyrocket. Uh, by the way, if you have a Gmail account, you do have a Google Plus account. You might not even know it, but you do. So keep that in mind. Uh, you might also want to learn how many read users there online about your brand, and uh, how many people are actually interacting and sharing your content. This is a good indicator of how things work there. And uh, there are a lot of tools out there to do what we just discussed. There are tools that uh, actually are free to use and are quite handy. Google has a lot of them. Uh, the, the trends, the analytics, uh, even a simple Google search with a little bit of time and uh, searching, for example, the news, you must have the hours to be great results that you won't see in the, uh, the journal search. So there are a lot of things that you can get for free. There are a lot of things that are um, not as a fortune, they're only for uh, big companies. but. As you're starting up, you will see that the main, or uh, the best thing that you could do is keep it simple and uh, focus on uh, one thing. So uh, we want to simplify things for you and we created something that you can have and uh, that's only for you. We made a dashboard, rather a scorecard, that uh, you can have your own KPIs and uh, you can download it for free to you. We just finished it up this uh, weekend, so you can use it. Uh, the link is here xpo.co slash social media QPA scorecard. Uh, you probably get the presentation, but if you want to write it down anyway. Uh, it's a simple Excel um, with all the formulas integrated, and uh, here you can, it's got some KPIs already uh, in there. It doesn't matter, you can change them, you can turn them away, you can put your own, you can add some. Uh, and we open up some spots for actuals. And for your goals, so the best thing would be to go for a full semester or even a full year with your goals, and then each month go back and add what you scored in terms of those KPIs. And uh, this will show you in shades of uh, green to red and the percentage, how well you perform versus your goals. And uh, we'll actually add a tiny bit of spark lines there as well, so you can see a small graph of how you've been doing uh, year to date. Again, this is for you, feel free to use it, and feel free to play with it and add more stuff. Uh, as I said, the KPI is actually what you really need to measure is all based on what you really want to measure your business plan. Social media is not different from what you're planning on doing. Oops, sorry for that. And uh, I think we're at the time. So before I go, just one tiny <coughs> note. Uh, you have to decide to for your future business, is either you work for a business or you make your own startup. What how do I actually make to do? You can stick with the usual business definition of the term, which is return on investment. And I guess 
most of you will know that it is scaling on investment lines and cost divided by the cost and that's the percentage. Or you can ignore me totally and pretend that I wasn't here and didn't discuss anything and uh, go back to ignorance. Which is a bit dangerous. I know you're uh, ambitious people. I know uh, you're the highest of them. Uh, performance here, thanks to the faculty, so uh, I'm pretty sure you're going to be great. So, thanks a lot for that. I'm open for any questions you might have. I hope I was understood enough. I haven't spoken English for a long time, so hopefully that was okay. Thank you um, very much. I think that uh, scorecard mm -hmm. that you're giving is a very good tool. So I would really appreciate if you could connect the APIs with your presentation and explain a little bit more each one of them. Okay, this is just a bit, but uh, I think yeah, I, no problem. I can go through them. Uh, most of them are pretty much self-explanatory. For example, the paid reach is how much people you can reach to a paid ad. This would be a Facebook ad, this would be a promoted post. You might have seen on your Facebook uh, timeline that it presents some, something like uh, your friend uh, suggests that, and uh, there's a branded post below, which is actually paid. It says, uh, I don't know how to English how it says it, but it increases for women, so it says that. Uh, it makes clear that it's a matter of In any case, uh, this will be your paid links actually, meaning what you can have reached in terms of Apple Gamma's money and the, this many people seeing but not access. So, uh, shares is actually a, a this pretty good image as well. Uh, it could be how many people are happy enough with your content so they're sharing it uh, around with their friends or with their links and retweets and stuff like that. Uh, link reviews is also very self explanatory if you have a link on your. Uh, and your post, and you can count how many people have actually uh, clicked on it. Referral traffic and uh, referral conversions are actually based on our Google Analytics tools. So I would advise you to, to save if you get involved in this kind of situation. Uh, it's uh, mostly two metrics that are really important when, uh, if you're trying to figure out your uh, website's uh, migration, let's say. Uh, for referral traffic. This might not be available for all of you, and this doesn't actually apply to show the web as it is, it's more of an overall approach. So uh, you can use that. And the server voice as well as how many people are actually talking about your brand online. And uh, if you want to, you can add another KPI putting on the, the online positive or negative sentiment, the trend that we discussed before, how well it goes. As I said again, these are just indicators. Uh, you can go in more depth, you can define what you really want to measure, and uh, take from there. You can add or subtract. You can eliminate them um, entirely, have up your own, or play with them, see what they do for you, and uh, take from there. I'd like to ask you, um, regarding the search engine optimization on Google, mm -hmm. that is continually changing, like now it was keywords, now it's uh, content. Uh, how uh, easy companies adapt to that, and uh, what does it mean? How does the company know what is valuable content? Are you based on top your thoughts on intuition or? Well, uh, thank, you. thank you for the question. It's a good question. Uh, to take the first part of uh, brands don't usually adapt it in any change, uh, even more with this that they can not publish on their hands. So uh, the answer to the first one is pretty much. We try to help them out. So. Uh, as to what extent the, the evaluation goes, we don't really like to rely on intuition. Business is not good to be based on intuition. So uh, we're kind of uh, performing metrics, uh, seeing what, uh, for example, if we're making, let's, let's take Facebook, for example, it's not the best example, but just for the sake of it. If we have a branded post, then uh, we can see if this post was valuable to people, if people liked it, if people got engaged with it, if they had their own comments. Uh, as a, a rule of thumb, we don't uh, ask people what we call as close questions. Like trial and error, right? Yes, and more, more or less you can figure out what's in the interest of people. As I said, it's the first of the three of them. It's for them. 
If you have a they they just address the problem, it's much easier to find it, much easier to you know, relate to that, find the value of it, and then it's much easier to use to manage a long run the uh, customer for the plan or whatever you want for. Thank you. Yes, please. I just have a question because um, I think you're an expert. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I have an expert. Like, yeah. <laughs> First of all, thank you very much for, for someone who is ignorant of these things. I never heard of it. And my daughter's studying in Holland, and her professors there told her in the old days we could get a CV. And now they advise her to set up a blog with Sai Hanahan saying it, and to put her projects there and things like that. Do you advise this to the students? Well, it kind of depends on how uh, it's pretty much a personal question in terms of how I, I wouldn't be ready. I'm, 40 months old, probably wouldn't bother doing that, I'm with you all see here, here I am. But uh, for you, and uh, based on what you actually have to promote, it might be a good idea. For example, I've seen some great resumes from people that are on the creative arts department, as creative directors and stuff like that, which is entirely online, either on a blog or on a website that they present their work of art. And that's the whole resume, they don't send it on print, just on the link. It works fine. So, once again, it's up to what you have to decide. It's a good idea, it's a cutting edge. You might want to try it out, but don't, just don't be 100% sure that all the companies will be as acceptable as perhaps Extreme would be because we are on social media. Uh, to review a, a resume that's too funky or too fuzzy or whatever on, uh, as part of the piece of uh, CV. Uh, perhaps you could try both ways. That would be a good approach to have Complimenting your old trusty um, creative So, I hope this answers your question. Thank you. This is more or less uh, what you can do through LinkedIn. Well, LinkedIn, yes, actually works a lot. There are professional. things like that to add the videos, to add words. Exactly. You can add, you can add a lot of things. It, it depends on how creative you feel, how creative your uh, actually uh, orientation business life is. You can do a whole lot of things. Up there, creative is a living thing. Creative is interesting in itself. So, uh, go on and try it. Just make sure you have a traditional way as well because uh, not all will be receptive to that kind of approach. Okay, thank you very much for your presentation.